I've spent the last decade trying to figure out how to spend less and save, but still live my dream life. And I will tell you how to get there easily. Bad money habits, increasing prices, they all contribute to making our lives harder and the stress that comes from financial insecurity only piles up on the worries we already have. Slow and simple living pair up with some basic money habits that I learned while working in finance has helped me reach a balance where I feel less pressure by the cost of living and money issues. So many of us feel the impact of living costs and often we think sustainable living cannot go along with savings or with lowering life expenses, but it's not true. The shift is especially in perspective and behaviors, but let's start from the beginning. Nature as a hobby. Nature offers you an alternative way to enjoy your free time instead of spending money on expensive hobbies and can be an amazing booster not only for your mental health, but for your physical condition as well. One of the first things I've noticed was how cheap it is to actually spend time outdoors. Nature is free and many hobbies that can be practiced outdoors are often very cheap. Think about painting, photography, hiking. You get the gear once and then you're set. Go out for a walk, read a book under a tree or simply spend time outside. Nature can have a calming effect on our brain and that contributes to our mental health. Our cabin sits in the middle of the Alps. We are absolutely blessed by the beautiful surroundings, but nature can be found even in a more urban setting. You just need to look closely. Reading on a budget. Another really enjoyable and inexpensive hobby is reading, and it's quite cost effective. Books can be bought second hand, even online, or you can visit your local library, which will provide you with a never ending source of material for free. And don't forget that you can exchange them with your friend, so the choice is really abundant. I tend to prefer books in paper form, but sometimes I compromise and go for digitals and read them on my e-reader. Digital books not only are cheaper, but they are more sustainable for the environment, so it comes with a bonus. And many libraries offer a loan service for digital books as well. Eating without overspending. Eating and food are another really tricky subject, but there are many ways to keep the kitchen filled on a budget and not boring. I personally am a vegetarian, so my choices might be a bit different, but anyone can benefit by incorporating more pulses in their diet. Pulses and legumes are one of the healthiest and cheapest options you can actually find in the market from which you can start to make a meal from. They are easy to store, especially if in dry form, you can find them canned, in tin or glass. And of course, you can buy them fresh. They can be used to make soups or whole paired with vegetables or as a base for burgers or patties. Fresh vegetables are another cheap option if you stick to the seasonal though. I know what you're saying. Fresh vegetables and fruits are not cheap. But actually, they are, if you compare their nutritional value with that of any ultra-processed food. Cheap processed food tend to fill you up for a shorter time, increases your chances of developing diabetes or other metabolic-related diseases, and in the long term, it will cost you more, physically and economically. Absolutely empty calories. Avoid food waste by cooking more basic stuff at once and then divide it in portion and put it in the freezer so you can take it out whenever needed. I usually do it with my vegetable broth or with some pre-cooked lentils or sauces that I keep on the side and have ready to go. And I will strongly suggest that you start carrying around with you a reusable bag that's not only more sustainable, it's cheaper and I know we are just talking about scents here but there's an underline that I will explain to you later. If you want some easy, tasty and really inexpensive recipe to start from, I'll suggest you look up these two books. Feed Me Vegan by Lucy Watson and What Vegan Eats by Brett Cobley. There are many YouTube channels from which you can get some recipe or some new ideas to how to cook easily and cheaply but still getting a taste out of it. So just go and look up. House care. Generally, keeping things simple in a house, it's more cost effective and easier to maintain. 
This doesn't mean things cannot be cozy and nice, but it requires that you actually be more mindful of what you surround yourself with. Speaking about cleaning products for the house, I rarely buy any. I tend to make them myself with natural materials and they do clean up. This way we got zero bottles to throw away and I know what they contain and they do their job. We use solid cosmetics as in shampoo, soap or conditioner. So whenever I have soap or shampoo left over, I save it in a jar and when I have enough, I'll grind it and make some new soap from scratch and nothing gets wasted. When I said cozy earlier on, I was thinking about candles and especially with candles, I really hate when the thin layer of wax is left over so I collect them and I make new candles with it. And a really useful trick that my grandma swore by, and she's been through the Second World War, so I think she knew what she was talking about, it was uh, never to turn on things like dishwasher, washing machine during the day, but doing it usually at night or at least where it's cheaper in your area. Here for us it's after 7 uh, p.m. and before 7 a.m. I know it might seem inconsequential, but it actually makes you save a fortune. Clothing. If you really want to get the most out of the things that you are buying, I would really consider going sustainable and conscious. Footwear and clothing are one of my favorite subjects when we are talking about saving on the long term. Good quality will always beat quantity. Good materials are easy to take care of, they wore out more slowly, they will be good on your skin and they tend to show up for themselves. They need less washing and they will last longer. Uh, think about wool. It contains lanolin, that is a natural antibacterial, so it doesn't need to be washed so often, unless of course you jump in a puddle of mud. You can always mend, even visibly, a good sweater. There are thousands of tutorials on this on YouTube, or you can find some books on it, and if you don't feel like doing it by yourself, you can always take it to somebody to fix it for you. It will always be cheaper than buying something new, if it's good quality. And a good pair of shoes can always be taken in for repairing. While if you get a cheap pair of shoes, when they get worn out, the only thing that you can do with them is throw them in a the garbage. One of my favorite brands for shoes is Kavat. Uh, I think they are Swedish. They are amazing and lasting shoes that are made for everyone, kids as well. They even have a second-hand shoe shop of their products online and they do reparation for worn-out pieces. A simple rule I try to stick to when shoes are concerned is visible stitching. If you can see them, someone can repair them. If soles are simply glued in place, the shoe will have to go when the sole is worn out, even if the shoe is still in good shape. I think it's a total waste. Mindset. Another asset we sometimes forget about when saving is concerned is mindset and behavior. But it can really make a difference. Mindset change the way you look at things. When you give yourself time to really look around and understand what you want instead of being influenced by commercial ads and trends, you find yourself spending way less and more consciously. A good place to start is by doing some activities like meditation or practicing gratitude. Things that help you stay focused on the here and now. I've been using an app called Calm since I think forever and they do not sponsor me in any way so I only mention it because it really helped me. They have guided meditation, uh, breathing exercises, music for relaxation and anything else that you might think about that you want in a mindful app. And let's get to the tricky part. Bad money habits. A basic mistake we all tend to make when we receive our paycheck is paying for our expenses straight away. And then if something is left over, we put it in the savings. You couldn't do anything more wrong. We should put aside straight away that 10% of your paycheck and then start paying for all your expenses. Bills, uh, grocery, loans, rents and everything else. But that 10% has to go straight away, it has to be untouched and sacred. It's a peculiar shift in mindset and a simple psychological trick. Once you know how much is left, your brain will figure out the best way to make the ends meet. But to make it work, you have to start tracking your spending habits. This way you can understand where your money actually goes and make the most of it. To get back to the reusable bag we were talking about earlier, I want to point out that this is not about how cheap or expensive something is, it's about attitude. 
Of course, a five cents bag will not make a huge difference, but starting to pay attention to where your money goes will definitely change things. It's as if every day you go out of the door and throw a few five cents coins on the street. You wouldn't do that, right? So what's the point of wasting them on a bag you could have taken from home for free? It's all about mindset. This is what I was talking about. We need to give money back its value if we want to make sense of it and start saving or at least not throwing it out of the window. Investment. I might live off grid but I don't live in another planet. I am deeply aware of what inflation can do and I keep myself informed on how best to invest money. And I'm not talking super risking investment. Getting professional advice is a great resource and many banks offer it for free. So go talk with somebody and decide what you do with the money that you have. Well unless you rather keep your money under the mattress, but then I will not talk about investment. Just remember, money sitting in a bank does no good. You either use it or invest it. Just don't leave it sitting there because inflation will slowly eat it up. And since the point of this whole video is saving and getting some money on the side, I will strongly suggest it not to just go out and buy something compulsively just because you have some money on the side. Remember, when we're just saving, you can buffer up to three to six months of your expenses. Your mind will finally be free to focus on something more meaningful. So slow and steady. Start to work towards your goals and I promise things will start to look different. All the things that I've been talking about are quite simple to achieve. But the whole point around it, it's mindset. You need to change your attitude to make plans long term. Being conscious doesn't mean that you can never do something impulsively. It means that sometimes you'll get to do the crazy stuff because 90% of the time you're in control of your life and your choices. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you have any question or want me to clarify something, head on to the comments and let me know. This is it for today. And until next time, take care. Ciao.